It's on 1999. It's my first year teaching elementary school. Uh, second grade, I have 22 seven-year-old kids. I'm about four weeks into my career and something has gone terribly wrong. I've got this boy in my class, this red-headed boy named Brandon. And Brandon is smart and he's funny and he's charismatic. But Brandon is the spawn of the devil. <laughs> and my kids all love him and they follow him and he leads them down the path of destruction every day. And I can't get hold of my class. And I remember the moment he took it. It happened on the first day, in the first hour of my school career. My behavior management system is a bulletin board at the back of the room full of frogs. And each kid has a frog. And the label on the top is, it isn't easy being green. And every kid has a card. And they all start green. And if they misbehave, they go to yellow. And then if they really misbehave, they go to red. And Brandon went to red in the first hour of my career. <laughs> and so all the kids turned to me, wondering what's the big trouble that red means? And I didn't know, because I hadn't thought that far. <laughs> and I couldn't send him to the principal, because the principal would think I'm a terrible teacher. And I couldn't call his parents on the first day, because they would think I was terrible. So I said, Brandon, that's a warning. Don't do it again. And it, that's all a kid like Brandon needed to hear. So Brandon decided it was true. It is not easy being green, and he went red for the rest of the time, and he brought everyone with him. And that wasn't even really the worst part, because I wasn't second in line to be in charge either. There was a kid named Ryan who was, like, vying for Brandon, and he was way out in front of me, too. And then there was this girl, Alyssa, who I felt like I was running neck and neck with. So I was, like, fourth in the chain of command. And... I just was starting to wonder if teaching was going to be for me. You know, like teachers quit really early in their careers and I never thought it was going to be me and I started to think like, I'm, this is not going to happen for me. And the day I found the solution, it was in October, I was in the grocery store and I had asked teachers for help before this and Brandon's first grade teacher had told me that in March she put him behind a bookshelf so she couldn't see him anymore <laughs> and that was it. And I just felt like I couldn't hit the nuclear option in October. And then I knew I was really in trouble when this thought passed through my mind, exactly. I don't think Brandon's gonna give me permission to put his desk behind the bookshelf. <laughs> so I was desperate and I was in Stop and Shop and I'm buying candy for Halloween. And I'm thinking about Brandon and I'm like, what do I have that Brandon doesn't? Like he's smarter than me and he's funnier than me and he's better than me in every way. But then I realized I have candy and kids will do anything for candy. So the next day I come to school and I put a junior mint on every kid's desk and I tell them that if they're excellent at the end of the day, they'll get another junior mint. And if they're really good, they're gonna get three. And on Friday, if we have a great week, they're gonna get M&Ms, a full bag from me. And just like that, Brandon's empire topples <laughs> and I seize control of my classroom. And I start to learn actually how to get kids to behave and mostly it's I have to stop playing school and start teaching school and I have to love the kids and then they start to love me. And now it's April and things are going well but I'm still giving candy and I feel terrible about it. Because now like, I'm just, they're all getting larger and they're, it's just not going well and I feel bad. And you can't set an expectation for kids and then pull it back because they'll, ki they'll kill you. And so I meet halfway. It's Friday, I'm supposed to give out M&Ms and I take out raisins. And I say, guys, we're gonna change it up. I'm gonna give you raisins. I have never seen children switch over to anger so quickly. <laughs> like, I was worried, like, Brandon was gonna be like Napoleon and he was gonna come back and take over, but I had enough skills to hold him back, but the kids were pissed. And one kid said, can we throw these away? And I said, no, you can't. I don't care what you do with them, but do not throw them away. And so they all stuffed them in their desk and grumbled and the weekend came. A few days later, I reached into my pocket of my coat to grab my keys. I felt something weird inside the pocket. I pulled it out, and it was a raisin. And I thought, like, where did, how did that get there? Like, I had eaten raisins one day, so maybe it was there. And a couple of days later, I opened a book to read aloud to the kids, and on the page I'm on, it's three raisins jammed <laughs> into the binding. My stapler runs out of staples one day. I open it to fill it with staples. There's little raisins right where the staples go. My world becomes a wash in raisins. And these seven-year-old kids are not acknowledging it. I'm like, who put raisins in my stapler? And they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. 
I get a note in my mailbox in the office. It's on orange construction paper. It's got raisins glued to it, and it says, we want candy. <laughs> and I don't even tell them about it. I don't acknowledge its existence. My entire last two months is a wash in raisins, and I'm just trying to get through it. It's the last day of school. I have to give a speech about my class, and I'm telling the parents how I've fallen in love with these kids. And each one of them has to come up to the stage and receive a certificate from me and shake my hand. First one up is Kayla. She comes up. I reach my hand out to shake her hand, and she puts a raisin <laughs> in my hand. And then Alyssa comes up, and she does the same thing. Every kid steps up onto that stage and puts a raisin in my hand. Brandon is number eight that year. You never forget your first class. He puts a raisin in my hand and smiles at me. And I think, I'm going to miss that boy who I hated so much for so long. He puts that raisin in my hand. And that's the moment that I know, like, I can be a teacher. I somehow went from this red-headed demon to this little boy who I am going to miss so much when he leaves my class at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you.